Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast here on thelittleshaman.com, brought to you by Transrelational Healing, shamanspiritcenter.com, and littleshaman.org. That's me, the little shaman. Today I wanted to talk to you about something that a lot of people find problematic when dealing with narcissists, and that is boundaries. Complicating things more is the fact that many people don't really understand what boundaries are or how they work, so they might think that they're asserting boundaries when they actually aren't, or they might feel that boundaries quote-unquote don't work because they don't really understand what boundaries are actually supposed to do. Keeping that in mind, let's start with a list of what boundaries are not. Boundaries are not rules for other people to follow, things designed to control other people, things that force other people to do what you want, things that force other people to respect you, they're not ultimatums, and they are not punishments. To put it very simply, boundaries in this specific context are about the ways that you will tolerate other people treating you and how you will conduct yourself. That's it. They're not about other people. They're not for other people. They are about and for you. This is one of the biggest misconceptions about boundaries. Many people assume that they are lists of rules for other people to follow. They're not. They are your own rules for you to follow. For example, if someone violates your boundaries, you are the one who's now required to address that. It's your boundary. These are your standards. It's up to you to uphold and enforce them. The other person is responsible for their own actions, of course, but they're not the only person that that's required of in this situation. It's required of you, too. So let's say the other person violated your boundary regarding speak it to you disrespectfully. They are responsible for that. You didn't make them do that. You didn't choose that action for them. It's completely their responsibility. But since they did do it, you now also have something that you need to do. You have to decide what action you're going to take to enforce your boundary. Are you going to end the conversation? Are you going to walk away from the relationship? And remember, these are not punishments. They are actions you are taking to ensure that you are not tolerating treatment that you find objectionable. You're not controlling the other person either. They can continue to treat people as disrespectfully as they want, and they can face whatever consequences that there are for that. You're not stopping them from doing anything. You're just stopping them from doing it to you. You are making sure that you are not dealing with that in your life. That is what enforcing boundaries is all about. So many times people say things like, but my boundaries didn't work. I stated my boundaries and they just did it anyway. It's important to remember that a boundary is not some magical thing that can suddenly make people do what you want even if they don't want to do that or they don't care. Nothing can do that. The way to use boundaries correctly is to accept that and stop looking for ways to control the other person because it doesn't work. You either accept them as they are and deal with that or you move on from the situation. Stop trying to force the right kind of relationship with the wrong kind of person the right kind of person will be interested in respecting you. They won't have to be told what basic respect even is or how to treat others decently. You can't have a healthy relationship with somebody like that. People talk about using boundaries with narcissists a lot, but many times they don't explain how to actually do that. If a boundary is not enforced, it's meaningless. It's just words, and words without action don't do very much. This is where a lot of people have trouble. They don't hold or enforce their boundaries, or maybe they don't even know that they're supposed to do that, and then they become frustrated because they feel like their boundaries don't work. People don't necessarily realize that their boundaries actually are working because they've identified the people who are not interested in respecting them. That is what boundaries are for. That's what they're supposed to do. They're not for forcing people to act how you want them to act. Boundaries identify the people who are not interested in respecting you or your boundaries so that you can respond appropriately to that. Now, some of the confusion that people have about boundaries is the result of content that focuses mostly on the creating or the stating or the wording or whatever of the boundaries, almost as if boundaries are like a magic spell and the exact wording is the key without making it clear that the other person may very well choose not to respect your boundary no matter how you say it. And if they do choose that, it's then our responsibility to address the situation by enforcing the boundary with an action. Such as, 
I don't like being yelled at and I will not tolerate that from anybody in my life. That is creating and stating a boundary clearly. But then what? Do we now just hope that the other person agrees with it? And if they don't, then oh well, our boundary didn't work? No, of course not. That's why stating the boundary is only the first part. We also need to state what we will do if the boundary continues to be violated and we need to be prepared to actually do that if it continues because it very well might. For example, I don't like being yelled at and I will not tolerate that from anybody in my life. If it continues, I'm ending the conversation. That is an example of a boundary and a follow-up action being stated clearly. Others could be, I will not tolerate violence. I'm not going to be afraid of my own house. If you throw anything, I'm calling the police. Or, I will not tolerate stealing. I'm not going to hide my wallet from somebody that I'm living with. If you take money from me again without asking me, I'm ending the relationship. We do it like this so that there's no confusion. We have stated clearly and in no uncertain terms what we're willing to tolerate, and the other person has been informed. That way, even if they try to gaslight or lie or pretend they don't understand or argue with it or whatever else, we know we communicated clearly and there is no credible way for the other person to claim that they didn't know or for us to be confused about whether we were clear or not. We know we were. We said what we don't like. We said what we're going to do if it happens again. Therefore, there's no other reason for the boundary to be violated further except that this person is choosing not to respect it. We are now required to respect our own boundary and enforce it by doing what we said we would do. The biggest issue most people have here, not surprisingly, is in the follow-through. They don't want to enforce consequences for the boundary because it will change things. It might even mean that the relationship will end. Maybe people are afraid to upset or anger anybody, or maybe they're not sure they really have the right to say anything. Many people feel very uncomfortable trying to assert themselves in this way for lots of reasons. This resistance to enforcing or even creating boundaries creates an opening for narcissists and other toxic people to exploit. It opens up a way around your no. A boundary is a no to a narcissist, no matter how it's framed or what is said. It doesn't matter that it's about you or what you want or how you feel. All they hear is that you're telling them no, that you're trying to control them. They don't tend to react well to being told no in general, and at the very least, they can be counted on to ignore it if possible. Narcissists are great ignorers of things that they don't like or they don't want to deal with. Not enforcing boundaries allows them to do that, and opposing or disrespecting the boundary allows them to feel that they're not being controlled. This is the crux of the issue when it comes to boundaries and narcissists. Boundaries make them feel controlled, therefore violating people's boundaries or getting people to relax their boundaries, pushing back on them, makes them feel as though they are in control. If you say, I don't like being yelled at and I will not tolerate that from anybody in my life, this is experienced by the narcissist as you as attempting to control them. Rather than understanding that what you're saying is about you and how you feel, rather than understanding any impact on you whatsoever, they simply hear that you're trying to tell them what to do. Remember, a narcissist's entire lens of perception is self-referential. Everything is about them. They experience other people's boundaries as restrictions on them. And as such, they often attempt to exert control over the situation by opposing them in whatever way they can. One of a narcissistic personality's biggest fears is being controlled. And many of them have a large, even pathological response to just the mere suggestion that others are trying to control them in any way. This is why you so often see such a big oppositional reaction to things that are small or that would even benefit the narcissist somehow. Not being controlled is more important. So when you say, I don't like being yelled at and I'm not going to tolerate that from anybody or, hey, don't spend our bill money on frivolous things because then we can't pay the things that we need to pay, they experience this as being controlled. And so often you will see a childishly oppositional contrarian reaction to that. They'll yell louder or more often or they'll spend more money. You can see why then that many people feel trying to create and communicate boundaries to narcissists doesn't work. Not only do narcissists ignore boundaries, they will often intentionally violate them. What's that joke? Why did the narcissist cross the road? Because they thought it was a boundary, right? To them, it's an invitation to disrespect because they feel disrespected by your attempts to quote unquote control them. 
this is absurd and ridiculous. Every human being has the absolute right to define for themselves what they deem acceptable as far as how others treat them and to exit situations and relationships whenever they choose, for any reason at all, whenever they want. Narcissists not liking or agreeing with that doesn't change anything. Of course they don't like it. Of course they don't agree with it. If people can do that, then it means that they can simply just decide one day that they don't want to deal with a narcissist anymore, whether the narcissist wants that to happen or not. And then what? What will the narcissist do then? For someone who feels so powerless and has such a huge fear of being controlled, it's about the worst thing that could happen to them that the people around them would suddenly realize they can do whatever they want and the narcissist can't actually stop them or do anything about it at all, except possibly trying to exit first so that they still feel in control and many of them do do that. The whole thing is nothing but a power struggle all the time. To narcissists, the fact that they cannot control you means that you're controlling them because they have no choice but to just take whatever you decide to do, whether they like it or not. If you decide to stop enabling them, if you decide to exit the conversation, if you decide to exit the situation, if you decide to exit the relationship, they can't do anything about that. This makes them feel controlled and powerless because things are happening that affect them and they can't do anything about that. This is why other people having their own minds and individuality and rights and power is so threatening to them. When people are not being controlled by the narcissist, those people can do whatever they want, including things that the narcissist doesn't like or doesn't want them to do, like exit the relationship while the narcissist is dependent on it and on them. As we discussed in the episode of the show, when a narcissist loses control of you, this creates existential terror in pathologically narcissistic personalities and it cannot be tolerated. Well, that's part of being an adult. We can't always control everything and we certainly cannot control what other people do. Narcissists need to learn that just like everybody else. If they can't, this is not your problem to put up with or your problem to fix. For your part, learn where you have power and use that. You don't have any real power over other people, so stop trying to control them. Stop trying to get other people to prove your own worth to you by changing who they are for you or for the relationship. Stop trying to smash a square peg into a round hole. Stop trying to make a sow's ear into a silk purse. It doesn't work. What does work is accepting when someone shows you that they're not interested in respecting you and using the almighty power of choice to instead choose relationships with people this actually matters to instead of trying to force it onto people who don't care. It's very important to remember that people not respecting boundaries doesn't mean that boundaries don't work. It means that those people are not interested in respecting your boundaries and because of that, the relationship cannot work. Your boundaries are working if they have identified for you the people who are not going to put in even a minimal effort to respect them or you. That's what boundaries are for. The rest is up to you. I hope this clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. I take appointments online over the phone, via text, via messenger, via email, and through Zoom and Skype worldwide. So if you are interested in speaking with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that. I have several books, workbooks, and handbooks in publication, so if you are interested in picking up a copy of any of those, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that, or you can find them on Amazon. Amazon.com. I teach workshop seminars and clinics, so if you are interested in seeing what we're running this month, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that. And if you are interested in joining our support group with access to exclusive content, weekly support meetings, and more, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that as well. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast here on the littleshaman.com, brought to you by Translational Healing, shamanspiritcenter.com, and littleshaman.org. That's me, Little Shaman. Shaman. May the great spirit bless you. Have a beautiful day. If you've been struggling through dealing with or recovering from an unhealthy relationship with a narcissist or other toxic personality, the little shaman has a catalog of over 500 YouTube videos designed to support your journey from discovery to recovery. You can also find additional resources on the little shaman website, including tools, courses, workshops, a support group with weekly meetings, and one on one appointments with the little shaman that are open to clients worldwide. There's even an AI chatbot built and trained exclusively by the Little Shaman using her work that can answer questions 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For more information, visit littleshaman.org. You can listen to the Little Shaman wherever you find your favorite podcasts.